Come, let us gather in the one unifying spirit. Unite us, Lord, by your everlasting love. We welcome the one who doubts. We welcome the one who says, unless I see, unless I touch. We welcome those who have heard the good news, the resurrection news, and are filled with fear, locked away, isolated one from another in distant virtual spaces. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live, gather, and worship in unity. We've come to worship in spirit and truth with joy and thanksgiving. Come, let us worship the risen Lord. Mighty God, living God, your eternal love is so deep, so broad, so high, and beyond all thought and imagination. You made the world in beauty and restore all things in glory through the birth, life, crucifixion, death, and victorious resurrection of Jesus Christ. Give us a spirit of kindness to welcome all people in fellowship in generous affection. Teach us to keep faithful witness and to boldly proclaim the good news of Jesus' resurrection. As we move through the sorrows, trials, and uncertainty of life, strengthen and uphold us with knowledge of the final morning when in the glorious presence of your risen son, we will share in his resurrection. Amen.
I will be reading Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. The believers shared their possessions. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. There were no needy persons among them, for from time to time those who owned lands or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone as he had need. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Reverend Christy Grimaud, Associate Pastor at Foothills in La Mesa, California, and a provisional member, recently approved for full membership and connection as an elder in the 2021 Annual Conference. It has been a long road since I began discerning my call into ordained ministry, and I am grateful for the great community at St. Paul's Coronado, who from the very beginning nurtured me, encouraged me, prayed for me, and helped me to discern the whispers and the nudges that I had been feeling for quite some time. They gave me the space to learn and grow, to question, to listen, and to answer. This was really important for me because I was so hungry for a supportive faith community. The faith tradition I was born into did not affirm female clergy. Now, I could teach Sunday school and work in the kitchen and sing in the choir, but I could not serve as a pastor. I felt a call very early on, but the limitations pressed upon me caused me to pursue a different path. Thankfully, God never let me go and brought many encouraging faith communities into my life that guided me back to the path to God. Communities especially faith communities, have great power. They can make you or break you. The scripture passage shows a community that makes you. This early Christian community in Acts is one where they are unified in heart and soul. They followed a we versus me philosophy where they didn't focus on individual gain, but the whole communities. This was not, there was not a needy person among them because they shared all of their possessions with each other. A community like this values unity, generosity, health, and wholeness for all people. Now, I don't know about you, but I have not met a community, or dare I say, a church like this. Have you? Where every single person supports the mission? Where people will do whatever it takes to accomplish the mission, even if that means selling their property and giving the proceeds to the church for those in need? Where no one is in need. I have not experienced a faith community like this. Usually, there is great need. This community was not a small community. At this point, there are 5,000 who believed. Now, it seems completely impossible that they could all be unified in one heart and soul. In my experience, getting five people to be unified is a miracle, much less 5,000. Even if this was a hidden utopia that retreats from society, eventually there will be fractures from within. Sooner or later, our human nature will get the best of us. Well, the apostles were certainly human, as well as the 5,000. So how were they able to be a community of love, unity, and generosity? Well, the verse that precedes this passage, verse 31, tells us. It says, when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God 
with boldness. The community prayed for boldness because they had just faced many challenges. Now, the timing was post-resurrection, post-ascension, post-Pentecost even. And the apostles were carrying on Jesus' ministry by preaching and healing people. Peter and John healed a man outside the temple gate. And the chief priests had them arrested. When they were questioned, Peter and John gave credit to the power of the resurrection of Jesus. So many people had witnessed this healing. And the healed man was standing right before them, so they couldn't deny what had happened. The Sanhedrin wasn't sure how to punish them without a revolt, so they told Peter and John they would release them if they promised not to preach in the name of Jesus. Well, Peter redeems himself. Remember when... He denied Jesus three times before the resurrection. Now, post-resurrection, he stands in full confidence and authority, filled with resurrection power, and denies Jesus no more. In verse 20, he said with boldness, we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. Well, they are released anyway and then gather with their community to give thanks to God. They pray together and ask for boldness to carry on Jesus' ministry of healing and restoration. And while they were praying, the Holy Spirit falls upon them and the power of the resurrection is so strong It shakes the house. I want to be part of a community where the Spirit shakes the house. So many communities are asleep, lost, divisive, and downright harmful. We need the power of the resurrection to shake us and transform us into encouraging communities of love. What would our churches look like if we were unified in mission and values? Not unified in political views, nor biblical interpretations, but communities as one based on the gospel of Jesus Christ. What would our churches Look like if the mission was to not have one needy person among them, where every person is restored to wholeness, not just a few. What would our churches look like if we were so generous with our money that we sacrificed our own security for the good of the whole, where we put others' needs above our own? What would our communities look like if every person prayed and prayed for boldness to become a transforming presence in the world where we cannot keep from speaking about the power of Christ? Well, Scripture shows us what they would look like. They would look like this, this early Christian community whose sole purpose was to carry on Jesus' ministry of healing and restoration. And the best way they accomplished their mission was to resemble Jesus. A community that resembles Jesus is one that values unity, generosity, and health and wholeness for all people, a community that loves, shares, and encourages. You know I have to ask. You know it's coming. Do our communities 
resemble Jesus? Are we so bold that we can't keep from sharing about Christ's transforming love? We should be and can be. A community such as this is not from human construct, but from the Holy Spirit. The resurrection is our source that creates communities like this. We can rise with the risen Christ and be transforming communities of love. With great power, our faith communities can make you into vessels of love that resemble Christ. Amen.
In Acts chapter 4, we see the early Christians were unified in the manner in which they showed love and cared for their faith community. I was struck by the generosity of these believers, holding back nothing, giving all they had to build the community. During this Easter season, we find ourselves face to face with the challenging circumstances and situations, the noise and the distractions that attack our faith. In the midst of these times, I am asking you to make an offering. Some of you are battling illness. Others are faced with losing homes and jobs. Many are grappling with the loss of important and critical life-sustaining resources. All of us are concerned about the well-being of family members, friends, and other loved ones. Under the burden of all of this, I'm asking you to make an offering because making an offering is essential to worshiping in spirit and in truth. Making an offering is essential to deepening our faith. Making an offering leads us to draw nearer to and walk closely with God. To the glory and honor of our Lord and Savior, in these challenging times, I'm asking you to make an offering to support the ministries of your home church. Let us pray. Holy and sovereign God, we proclaim that Jesus the Messiah lives again. Yet our thoughts are distracted by the many challenges of life. We lose sight of your abundant love. We lose sight of your grace. We lose sight of your mercy. We lose sight of the meaning and joy of Easter. We forget that we are an Easter people. Almighty God, send your spirit. Let it be through the power of your Holy Spirit that we focus on the resurrected Christ, remembering your promise of abundant and eternal life. O oh, great provider, strengthen us to give freely. Strengthen us to give generously. Strengthen us to give cheerfully. Amen.
Friends, our benediction comes from the Bible, from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. The God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in every good gift, so that you may do God's will. May God work among us all that which is pleasing in God's sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Yes, Lord, yes.